Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the 365 days of weather tracking project. This is a video collaboration with my very good friend Janice, where we both document the weather in our countries, so here in Canada, and her down under in Australia, and uh, we kind of like to see what happens throughout the month. So we are almost done this year-long project. We are working on the month of November, and this is the chart that I've predetermined to highlight the weather and the temperature each month. Now, Janice primarily was down here, and through this project, I realized that the te temperature in Australia changes, but not as drastically as it does here in Canada. And my November layout is a really good example of that. So I've gone ahead and I've printed my little report, and that's all listed in the description down below. And I associate the temperature with a color, and that's what we use to form the base of our layouts. Now, November was busy. As you can see, there was a lot of different activities going on in November. This is a typical Canadian month. It started off nice and warm. So if you look here in the toffee, like we were in the 20s in early November. And then as we go through the days, it got really, really cold, like minus 15. And then it gradually warmed up again. So that's why you've got a lot of colors on this page. Each of these little rectangles represent a day in the month and the color is associated to the temperature. I had a hard time landing on a base page for this layout because of the greens and the blues. Um, it was kind of throwing me off. So I went to a neutral tone. So this background here is mink and I'm going to map my photos in mink. And then I feel that because I've got the green and I've got the blue on this side, I think it's going to work. So I've used the stitched rectangle for my option here on this layout. And if you go to Janice's channel, you'll see that she will have used the Cricut file. So I'm going to kind of clear off my workspace right here and I'm going to start sanding all of these little pieces. I will come back and show you how to easily line up these corner pieces right here. Right now they're a little bit askew because I was testing quite a bit of uh, options for my base page. And uh, Jeff, this is a good tip for you. When you have a lot of colors and a lot of different photos that you're trying to document on one page, picking something that is neutral at the back usually works best. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sand all of these. I'll do that off camera and I'll be back with uh, something a little bit more put together. I wanted to quickly talk to you about my photos before I start adhering all of my little rectangles down. And you can see that uh, the range in color was, was quite distracting actually. But by simply adding, this is a mink background and this is from the Love Story mink collection. Now it's retired, but I was glad I had it in my stash. And I kept everything neutral, even the photo mats. I was going to do like either black photo mats. I am bringing in again the months of the year stamp. So I will be stamping that right here at the top. And uh, I wanted to keep the base page pretty neutral because I am adding quite a bit of colors. And there's a lot of things going on as far as the pictures are. Right here, I had to document how gorgeous it was here in November. I went to a retreat. This photo here is probably not the best featured photo, but it's important to document uh, the chaos of a crop weekend and then I'm going to add flip flaps. This was the probably the warmest day in November and then here was um, November again but it was cold and snowy. So I have quite a bit of different things going on in November. In November we had um, a launch party and we had two special guests. So Jennifer Smith came down to um, launch the party for us here in Ottawa. She's from Alberta. And then Pierre made an appearance and he brought his beautiful wife, Sylvie. It was such a surprise and such a treat 
to have a small gathering, but still, nonetheless, we had a gathering, we exchanged a lot of ideas, a lot of business ideas, and uh, it was a lot of fun. So I wanted to thank both Pierre and Jennifer for taking time out of their very busy schedule for sharing some of their knowledge with us. It was a lot of fun. So I'm going to continue here with the uh, adding of these little rectangles, and uh, we'll see how this layout turns out. All right, so let's take a look at the progress that I'm at at this point. I've gone ahead and I've put this layout together pretty much, and I'll give you some pointers on how to get these nice and straight. And you will know, you will see in the Cricut Design Space file that there's a lot of little elements in Cricut, and I usually try and stay away from Cricut pieces, but I felt that this page needed a little bit more. So these are just like little embellishments to add to in the back of the photo right here so i'm going to add this one to mimic this one here and these here are just two embellishments that i feel kind of really brings the page together so i've done some journaling here and i'm not sure if you can see it it's really uh, it blends into the page i did go ahead and i did use these really good labels they're clear labels and they are self-adhesive and once they're down, they're down. So it's a little bit subdued, but I do have some journaling here. I've got some opportunity to add journaling here and here. I haven't done that yet. So I'm going to um, show you how to put this page together. The other dilemma that I had was that, you know, we were starting off with all of this green and then we were working into the blues. So let's talk about this title here and the treatment that was done to it. It was looking a little bit bland and it wasn't really kind of popping on the page. And I really wanted to capture how different the weather was in November. So I did go ahead and I used toffee, sage, glacier, and a little bit of sapphire. And I just used my blender brushes and I did this blending technique on the back and then I stamped using espresso ink this is in espresso so it's kind of like bringing everything together and then i did the same thing here this one's not adhered down so let me show you i think that it looks really good and it really for me represents this month so again i started with a little bit of sage some glacier and then i just finished it off with a little bit of sapphire because those are the colors on this page. And I really like the way that that turned out. So let me move this out of the way and I will give you some pointers on how to adhere these pieces down. To start off straight, it's going to be much easier. And uh, I am definitely using my mat here. So I want to make sure that my base page is nice and straight on the mat. And the first one is key. Now, if you are using this particular one right here, what I did is I just used my um, double-sided tape and I just added just a tiny little bit to tack them down. And I just added this on a diagonal. Let me just move that because it has to be nice and square. And like in this particular case here, it's like at one and three quarters and it just hits that point, and then it hits the other point at one and three quarters as well. So that's how I started my little corners. The same thing here. So they are tacked down, and so I'm going like one and three quarters, one and three quarters, and it hits both of these points. Now, to be honest with you, I didn't even check if this was a true 45 degree angle but the angle works for this layout i'll show you how i adhere all of these down and as long as you start nice and straight you'll be good to go so i'm going to start with this one here and instead of playing a guessing game as to where am i going to add the glue i'm just going to add the glue right here on the base and I found that that also worked really, really nicely. So I'm going to add my piece. So I'm going to peel these off. You could probably see it better here right now. And then I'm just going to use my tape runner here and I'm going to fill this gap. And I'm just going to eyeball this as best as I can. 
and I'm actually putting this flush against this one and halfway through. So I'm going to do the same for this one right here. I'm going to push that down and then I'm just going to lift these out of the way. Okay, so we're just going to run this on the base right here. And then you can use a ruler, a T ruler, just to kind of help you with this part right here. Actually, these, the center one matches this one here. So I'm just going to add this right on the page. So I'm starting with the center one. Just want to make sure, and I didn't leave any spacing. I felt that it was just easier to put together that way. So we are going to continue on with this one and then this one right here. And that's pretty easy actually. So let me show you that one more time because I've got the opportunity to do that up here. So I am going to make sure that my base page is nice and straight. I'm going to add just a tiny little bit of glue. I'm going to pop that in. So the important thing is that your points are within the base. And then I'm going to lift these guys up. And I'm going to add glue on the entire surface. And I want to have it halfway. So I'm pretty much eyeballing this at this point. And then you can see here that there's a little bit of a gap, so I did not eyeball correctly, so I'm going to drop this down, just like so. That's why I like to use double-sided tape. You have the chance to kind of lift your little pieces before you commit fully. I'm gonna lift this one here. So this one lines up with this one here. So we're going to do that one first in the center. And then we're going to add these ones. And I really like that I took the time to sand these. I just find that, you know, they look much better. They're not so in your face. So I'm going to bring back my other page because I did move these down and I just want to double check. So if I bring these down, these are at five inches. So I'm going to lift these very gently. I just have a little bit of glue so you can use your, your little glue remover and just take that off like so and then these go here so I'm just lining up at the five inch so these ones here I'm actually going to add it directly to the piece and let me bring so I'm gonna go ahead and adhere all of these down I'm gonna use just scissors and uh, for me I prefer using like long tip scissors I find the micro tip I'm not as agile with them I am not the best cutter, to be honest with you, so I'm going to do my best here. So I'm just going to flip that over, and I just find that using a long pair of scissors, for me, works so much nicer. So I'm going to trim it here, along the length. So with the Cricut Design Space File, you don't have to do this part. So that is a bonus you know, because they are already sized to fit and uh, but I don't mind cutting these down as long as they're straight right so you will see that in a moment I'm gonna take these off the mat and there you have it. I think that looks really good. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to add my photos, and then we're going to do a project recap. Okay, so let's look at the completed pages. And to be honest with you, when I started with all of these colors, avocado, 
glacier, sapphire, it was like, oh my, how am I going to bring that all into one layout? And I think that by neutralizing the background and really showing the blending of the colors, which are the blending of the season for this layout, I think that it worked out really, really nicely. I am using the thin cut and I really like the way that the sanding shows off the stitching. This one here, once I add it to my page, I will add the flip flap. I really like adding a few more pictures using flip flaps. I've got a little bit of journaling right here. And then this page right here goes into all of the blues and it was definitely much, much colder, but you've got the nice sanding that was applied. And I really like the really subtle way that my two titles are kind of blending from the green again into the blue. Now go ahead and watch Janice's video and see how her November turned out. I will link her video down in the description below and also here at the end. But one last thing before I go, and this is the absolutely last day that you can register, I would like for you to join us in the Creative Design Team exclusive membership group. We are open until today and we would love to have you there where we show so many awesome projects. Both Janice and I are on that team and uh, we love working together. As you can see, we do some side bar collaboration with this project right here. So come and join us with the creative design team. I can't wait to see you there and start off the new year with brand new ideas and brand new projects. That's it for me today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, and as always, have yourself a fantastic day. Bye for now.